one of the things that's crazy is that they, you'll have to look it up on, on their website, but John Deere, it's like official now where they reduce their lift capacity on this loader. It's something like 880 pounds. I don't know if that means anything to you or not, but that's shockingly low for a tractor that's this size. Folks, how we doing? We are gonna give you a walk around of all of the tractors that we have available for sale right now. It is Tuesday, February 6th, 2024. Inventory will change depending on when you're watching this video, but you can go to goodworkstractors.com and then go to the used tractors page, or you can go to dreamtractors.com and just go right there skip a step if you want to. You go to the same place either way. Now our prices do include free shipping to 36 states as you're going through, as we are going through this walkthrough today. Keep in mind, and we're actually gonna go back into the shop. We've got some that are in there um, having hydraulics added on to them. We have some that are still inbound and just getting detailed up. Uh, we can put together tractor packages so we can add on grapples and snow pushers and blades and whatever else you want on your tractor, all right? So anyway, without further ado, the first one we have up here, now if you wanna get the, the nitty gritty, you know the exact hours or um, the year or you know the features about it, you can go and get all that information, the details and tons of pictures of it so you can stare at it and drool or maybe try not to drool right on the website too. But this is a Kubota Grand L 3560, all right? Part of the Grand L series, do not confuse it with the standard boring L-Series, which I think is actually Kubota's, one of their best-selling tractor lines, the standard L, but the Grand L, fancier, okay? It lifts more, um, they have multiple loader options on there. Um, they're going to uh, be a little more feature rich. They're gonna weigh more. Well, they're grand, you know? I mean, that's just what they, that's just what they do. More comfortable seat on there. Uh, more comfortable ergonomic joystick handle, you know, the, the tilt steering, the padded floor board and everything else. This one has a telescopic, telescopic, sound like a Canadian, like a youper, uh, lower links on there. And then the, the pins here as well. You're not going to find that. Oh, oh, I got a retainer pin. Got to pull that out. Just like that. That's super nice to have. Really love that. Not going to have that on the standard L. Anyway, lots of little little things that are on there, okay? That all add up to big things. But you pay for those big things, they cost more, okay? But the Grand L is just a beautiful tractor as well. We have another another one somewhere. The L6062. Chris, show them this, show them this treadle. This is the best treadle that there is. It's almost, it's almost like a side-by-side -side twin touch pedal. Not quite, not exactly, but you can go forward here, you can come back here, okay? Like a true twin touch, you have two separate pedals, like John Deere and Coyote and nearly everybody else. But for whatever reason, Kubota decided to go with the treadle, but this is the best version of the treadle pedal. This is the one I can tolerate. You don't have to use your heel to push down to go in reverse. Some folks don't care about that. For me, I hate it. That's one of the big knocks, about the only knock that I have against Kubota. Other than that, wonderful machines. Uh, next up, we're gonna have several that will that will fly through that are pretty similar in the Coyotes. These have been really, really good sellers for us. This one is the uh, the NS4710. You'll see a couple of these, a couple of the NX4510s, which are, man, you're splitting hairs. They're, they're again, very similar. Uh, this one has R14 tires on it. Look at all those little nubbies. Chris, give them a close up. I'm coming. Okay, right here, hurry up. Get that close up of those little nubbies on there. This thing's got like one or two hours on it. Okay, we bought some leftovers. Leftover, man, I love leftovers. Go for some Thanksgiving leftovers. But now these come standard with a rear remote on there, on the back side. okay? This is like a four series tractor. It looks similar in size to this Kubota Grandel it's sitting next to, but this one's about 45 horsepower. They do make these in just like a John Deere four series. You know, the, the 40 some horsepower, 50 some horsepower, 60 some horsepower. So all those kinds of things. It's competing against like a John Deere 4M or a 4R. So this is gonna be, in my opinion, more similar to a 4R than a 4M. Gonna have a comfortable suspension seat on there. Gonna have the, the better placement of the loader joysticks. Gonna have tilt steering, uh, the padded uh, floorboard or removable quick park loader, all that kind of stuff on there. Um, they come stand with a skid steer quick attach, but these are gonna cost substantially less than a John Deere or Kubota. So you are getting a better value. 
in my opinion, they're, I mean, they're right on the heels, you know, Kubota and, and Deere had the best name brand recognition. They had the most dealers out there. Funny enough though, I did a poll, I don't know, sometime in 2023 asking how many people go to dealers to get their service done versus doing it themselves. And it was something like 80, 85% of folks do their own service. So you're only going to a dealer if you need parts, but you can get parts shipped to you. You don't even need to go to the dealer for that. So if you need to go to the dealer, maybe you're doing it for a warranty issue or a major repair you can't deal with. And that's pretty darn rare for a lot of these tractors as well. So anyway, food for thought. That's another conversation. External three-point controls. You're gonna see these levers on a lot of the Coyotes as well. Super nice. This one's already lowered down as far as you can go. So there's nowhere else for it to lower or I'd show you that right now, but uh, pretty cool. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. So this, beautiful, Beautiful package, all this stuff right here, all comes together, all right? So this is a Kubota B2650. This one's um, a little bit older, it does have a block heater on here. If you see a plug like this hanging down on any tractor, okay, it's gonna have a block heater on there. So you got your belly mower, this one's 60 inches wide, I believe. 60 inch wide belly mower. You got the quick park loader, skid steer quick attach bucket on there. Turf tires, we did a poll, did a video on it too. Turf tires, really, really good for snow. Great for your lawn. These actually have pretty deep lugs though too. You're not gonna tackle your deepest mud, all right? But look at those lugs. It's a good machine. HVAC cab on here. This is one of the smallest machines you can get with air conditioning and heat, okay? It's a factory cab, not one of those aftermarket ones. I'm not knocking you guys with aftermarket cabs. I mean, I, I get it, but they're heat only. Well, Curtis has an add-on kit for air conditioning in a couple models. I don't know how well that works. They don't seem to be all that popular. Now, check out this snowblower, all right? You've got a couple things going on here. Whoever owned this tractor originally, they did it up nice, all right? Because you have the hydraulic chute rotation, which is standard, but then you have a diverter little box here to redirect that hydraulic flow for a hydraulic chute, or uh, sorry, a hydraulic deflector. So you have the rotation and the deflector on there. So that's fancied up, got these wing extensions on there too. Look at that thing, darn near, darn near new condition. Just some minor paint missing on there. And I believe, does this one have a rear remote as well? It does, that's right, because this one actually came in with a hydraulic rear blade on it. We sold that separately, somebody wanted it. Rear remote on here as well. Again, you have the telescoping uh, arms there and the end links. Pfft. Bad boy set up. I mean, I wish I could have like 10 tractors for myself, but that's just overkill. Next up, this one's bad. This one's sold though. I want to show you anyway. Kubota Grandel 4060 limited edition. This loader, brand new, okay? All it was was just the tractor. It had a mower, a finished mower on the back. That was what it was used for. So we had a brand new loader added on there, the LA805, skits your quick attach bucket. This gentleman is buying, we had a set of used forks that came in with another tractor. He's buying those. And one of our limited edition orange stump breakers there. Uh, again, part of the Grandel series. Well, let me show you this, let me back up. We talked about that treadle pedal. On the other Grandel, this one's gonna have that same nice one. Chris, show them this one though. I just did, actually. You showed them this? Yeah. Yeah, see, I don't like this one. You gotta use the toe and the heel and have your foot rocking there and it's all contorted and I just don't get it. I, you know, like I say, that's the only thing I don't like about those, but I like everything else. This guy sold. <gasps> so, really? Yeah. Yeah, I bought this tractor actually, um, I bought this tractor to destroy. I was gonna try to make a safety video out of it like showing it tipping over on hills and not having enough ballast weight in the backside and flipping up and all sorts of other stuff. And I just never got around to it. It's still a strong runner. We put a new battery in it, um, did a few things. It's got some minor hydraulic leaks, but this is, you know, it's 50 years old or something. But um, anyway, so I decided just to sell it off. You know, not a, not a bad deal though, with a tiller on there and a loader. Kubota B7100. I know a lot of you guys out there 
are familiar with this tractor and own them or have them owned them, but they're a little a little workhorse, a little champ. So anyway, maybe I'll find like a like a like a beat up John Deere 1023E or something and do a video. I still think it'd be a good video showing all these dangerous situations, but it's like, how do you operate the tractor? I don't want to, I'll have Chris sit on the tractor, perfect. right? Yeah, Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, good idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that before, but. Okay, uh, next up, 66 horsepower Monster right here. One of the biggest hydrostatic machines you can get. This is a John Deere 4066M, all right? So when you get to tractors this size, like that Coyote we were showing you earlier, these tractors are all gonna lift um, 2,500-ish pounds to full height at the base of the loader arm. They'll lift more if you're only just trying to get it off the ground. So it depends what you're looking to do with it, but you have a lot of lift capacity, a lot of stability. You can see how big those rear tires on there, good size front tires too. It's, it's really the first size of tractor, at least in John Deere, um, where you start to feel stable side to side. You don't feel tippy like the, the 3R tractors, for example, those feel so tippy side to side, but this is when you start to feel like maybe I don't need wheel spacers. You still want to add liquid ballast on there, add some wheel weights, that's, that kind of thing too, but uh, just a very capable machine. Now this is a, a 4M series, not the 4R. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, um, but it's simple, straightforward, and going to get a lot of work done at more of a value price. So this guy here is sold. This is a John Deere 3032E. If you, if you show them, Chris, though, side by side, you can kind of see a 3E versus a 4M. It's always good to have that kind of side by side comparison when you can. So again, sandwiched in the middle here would be the 3R, all right? It's a little bit bigger than the 3E, it's, you know, but it's, it's kind of sandwiched in between. So you have 3E, 4M, and then the 3R would be kind of in the middle here. Now, funny enough, we've got a 2R, 2038R sitting right next to it. So back up and show them that comparison, Chris. This is a 3E series and a 2R. Don't they look quite similar in size? The tire's a little bit bigger here, okay? But that loader on the 2R will actually lift more than this 3E. This is a real value tractor, okay? That 2R is also gonna cost more if it was the same configuration. So the 3E is just kind of a basic, you got some simple chores to do around the, the property and get it done without any bells and whistles and frills and limited lift capacity but you gotta be aware of its limitations. One of the things, one of the things that's crazy is that they, you'll have to look it up on, on their website, but John Deere, it's like official now where they reduce their lift capacity on this loader. It's something like 880 pounds. I don't know if that means anything to you or not, but that's shockingly low for a tractor that's this size uh, for the lift capacity rating. You know, that tractor, that 4M is gonna lift 2,500-ish, this tractor here, I believe the same, when we're talking about apples to apples ratings, which is as high as they go at the base of the loader arms, this one's like 11 or 1200 pounds. And this one now on John Deere's website is like 884 pounds or something like that. Just kinda, anyway. So uh, John Deere 2038R TLB. T stands for tractor, L stands for loader, B stands for backhoe, all right? So this is, a premium or a deluxe type of um, model that John Deere offers. 270B backhoe on here has, of course, power beyond hydraulics to control that, its own backhoe seat as well. Uh, 38 horsepower for a tractor this size is awesome, okay? Um, it's about as, just about as much horsepower as you can get out of any tractor in this size. The only other one that I can think of right now that comes to the top of my mind is gonna be the Coyote CK series. They make a 40 horsepower tractor that's roughly the same size okay but um you know so if you're on a lot of hills or you're going to need some real um a lot of power for pto engagement it's a great one to get it's going to be you're going to go from 32 horsepower to 38 because of a turbo that's added on there though so anyway um good machine there here's another coyote ns4710 this one's going to be the same same setup there you can still see the little little nubbies on there chris yeah, a little close up on there this one just has the R4 tires, of course. We've done videos comparing tires. Other than that, same kind of setup. Uh, these actually, these Coyotes have full warranty. Again, we bought them, they were leftovers and they've never been registered. So they're gonna have full warranty when you go to register them, which is a six year powertrain uh, and then a two year concurrent. But 
<coughs> I'm sorry, bumper to bumper. Now this is a Coyote NX4510, again, super similar. There's kind of a rumor, who knows if it's true or not, that eventually the NS series is gonna replace the NX series, but they're, they're so stinking similar. I mean, it's like, why carry both of them? So I think that probably will happen, but who knows? I'm just speculating at this point. Um, either way, you can't, go, you can't go wrong. Just wonderful machines, a uh, lot of capability, way better value. I'm not knocking John Deere and Kubota, right? You got to think about resale value. But if you're starting closer to zero and your goal is to get to zero dollars owed, then, or even, you know, minimizing depreciation, if you, if you have less space to get to zero, then there's less depreciation available. And no tractor gets to zero dollars of value. You can burn up a tractor and still sell it for scrap, but you can sell that 50 year old Kubota that sold for eight or nine grand, something like that. 50 years old with like 2,500 hours. So think about that. Think about what they probably paid 50 years ago for that tractor and it's still selling for eight or nine grand. So that's the idea, right? Is I, I think you're better off, that sweet spot is buying a very low hour, like everything that you're seeing here, very except for that old Kubota, a very low hour tractor that's already had that initial depreciate, uh, initial, can I talk? Initial depreciation hit taken by the new owner, right? Because no matter what brand it is, you're gonna lose money when you drive it off the lot. Same thing as a car, okay? So buy it right after that, when it still has tons of, all of its life left in it, basically. And then you're gonna just trickle down the depreciation just a little bit over time. You're gonna be in a great spot, so if you need to resell it, all these tractors here, these are resold tractors, okay? People buy tractors and think, oh, I'm gonna have it forever. Well, guess what? A ton of people's needs change. Watch that bucket there, Chris. Don't hit that bucket now. So that's moving slow. Yeah. But we buy low hour tractors because people's needs changed, right? They move, they lost their job, they bought more property, they sold their property, they decided they want a cab, they decided they want an open station. There's tons and tons of reasons why people sell low hour tractors that are totally legitimate, but life changes. So set yourself up for success so you can get out of it quickly and without taking a big hit and a big loss like you would if you were buying new and then you had to unload it. Anyway, I digress. Here is the Kubota Grand L6060. Beauty. This was kept in a barn forever. It's actually like a 10 year old tractor. Crazy. It's only got like, a, what this one have on you, remember? I don't know, say a hundred hours or something. I mean, it was like almost nothing, you know, for a 10 year old tractor. I mean, look at these tires. They don't have the nubbies on them, but they're still, I mean, hardly hardly any use on it at all so very similar to that kubota l grand l 3560 we showed you already this one just has 62 64 horsepower versus like 37 horsepower on the other one so you got a, a few more ponies under the hood now comparing tractors that are similar in size like 60 some ish horsepower to 60 some ish horsepower. Look at these two. These are two 60 some horsepower tractors, but in a different frame size, all right? And so this is one of the reasons why I don't like it when somebody says, I need a 60 horsepower tractor. Well, there's a smaller hydrostatic one. Here's a bigger gear drive one. This one's gonna lift a lot more. It's a lot wider, a lot bigger, a lot heavier. Can use larger attachments. Or do you wanna go with all the opposite of that with a smaller one? Or even worse, 25 horsepower tractors, you have like a 1025R, a 2025R, a 3025E, a 3025D. Then Coyote has some other models like the CK2510, CK2610, CS2510, CX2510. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. It's like nonstop. So, and they all do different things. They all have different setups. Maybe some have mid PTO, some have, all of them have rear PTO. Some you can get factory cabs, some you can't. It's just horsepower should be looked at after about four or five other requirements. And so we can help walk you through that and get you set up with the right tractor. If you need a specific horsepower, it's because you are running a specific tool that only one company makes. You can only get it in one size and it requires a certain amount of horsepower to operate it. That's when you need a certain amount of horsepower. Otherwise, why? You know, I mean, it, you know, yeah. So anyway. Um, so this is a good one. This is a utility tractor, okay? This is kind of like, if you follow the channel, the Kubota M4D071, all right? This is a few less horsepower. They have a, an RX, a Coyote RX, uh, was it 7320 or 7620, the bigger version of this. This is gonna be the uh, slightly smaller version, but capable workhorse. This one only had 35 hours on it. <laughs> 35, 
hours on this thing. Has a rear remote on there too. What are these? Uh, was it, are those ran up front? Oh, they are. Yeah. So this one has. This one has a yeah, kind of. What's the right term for this? A poor man's third function, where you can run, you know, from the rear outlets back there, and you can run hoses up front like they they've got on here. And then you could hook up a grapple if you wanted to, but you have to control that with a lever that's not like a thumb button on your on your joystick. So it's a way to accomplish that functionality, but it's not the perfect world, right? It's just kind of making do with what you have on there already. This here is a beauty. This is one I actually thought about keeping for myself too. Uh, I actually ended up keeping a uh, uh, the same model, but just with the loader and not the backhoe and a snowblower. But this is sold. Uh, I just sold this one to a customer. We're going to be adding a third function onto it for them. But it's a Coyote CK4010 SE hydrostatic. So you got the loader, the HVAC cab, the backhoe on it, and it has a front mount snowblower too. Uh, also has the uh, the R14 tires on there. It's just a gem, just a beauty. Um, what more can I say? These are these are awesome tractors. The CK series from Coyote is is kind of like in a class of its own. You know, it's it's tough to compare it. You can't compare it against the the Kubota LX series or the B series because it's it's just well, if you do, I mean, this is going to crush it in all in all the capacities, the lift capacity on the loader, the three point, the weight, the hydraulic system. You know, if you compare it against the John Deere 3E series, well, the 3E is technically like a, the footprint's a little bit bigger, but this lifts double the amount of what the 3E series does. It's just, it's like an anomaly. It's just a, an amazing machine in a compact space. The one downside that I don't like is you can't add wheel weights. There's no provisions, and they it's like this on the Kubota LX series and the B series too, and the Summit TX25, and for whatever reason, the the tire or the wheel manufacturers didn't put provisions in those uh, wheels to put wheel weights on there. Now, if you got the R1 Ag tires, then you can, then you can add on wheel weights, just but because they're a totally different wheel than what these ones are. But uh, yeah, this is this is a bad little machine right here, 40 horsepower, Coyote. It's the biggest. CK model that they make, they make a, a, a CK like a 2610, a 3510, and then the 4010. So this is the biggest one in that series there. Pretty darn awesome. So here's a uh, another John Deere 2038R. Now this is the same as the one that we looked at earlier, except this one has the drive over belly mower as well. So you can kind of do it all with this machine. This one had like, I don't know, 35 hours or something on there. Uh, it's got the canopy too, of course. It came from Tennessee or Alabama, somewhere down there. But beautiful machine. This really is a a great machine. The, the two things that I don't like about the 2038R, the 2R series in general, you can't put a factory cab on there. I don't know why John Deere did not come out with a factory cab that has air conditioning and heat. And then they kept it a two range transmission with a high and a low. Most of these, basically every other tractor we've looked at except that uh, John Deere 3032E all have a three range transmission, a high, medium, and low. I live in medium range most of the time, but everybody, no tractor is completely perfect. You know, the only way it'd be perfect is it'd be a one-off because we would go through and make it for ourselves with everything that's important to us. And and so, you know, I try to point out the things that are important to me, but they may not be important to you. Okay, so here is a smaller one. This is, uh, I got some bird poop on there. So we had the CK, we showed you that CK40, Coyote CK40. This is the CX. Okay, so they have not just their subcompact. If we go back to John Deere, they have a John Deere 1025R, a John Deere 2025R, and then a John Deere 2032 and 2038 like this one. So Coyote has the CS series, they have the CX series, and then the CK, and then it just keeps going on up from there. So this is kind of like the, the 2025R, except this one has a factory cab on it. So you can't get a factory cab with air conditioning uh, and heat on the 2025R. So It'd almost be like a Kubota B2650 or LX2610, but it's slightly smaller than that. So it's, that's what I mean. It's tough to get apples to apples. You just can't quite do it. That's a nice one though. Real nice machine. R14 tires on here. You can get a front mount snowblower if you want to. Um, you know, quick park loaders, gets to your quick attach. I don't know if these ones have a rear remote. This one does have a rear remote. They might be standard on here too, but it has the external three-point control. 
They all have these little toolboxes out there as well. I like them. You know, I mean, John Deere has those too. And uh, Kubota does also. But uh, nice little toolbox. It's in a good spot. Good machine. You know, all these machines you want to add ballast weight to. Um, this is one that you definitely want to. It's Especially with the cab on there, it does get a little bit top heavy. But even if they don't, even the open stations, they're still so narrow. You want to get liquid ballast in the tires. You can't put wheel weights on this one though either. But you can put three point weight on there. I'd highly recommend all that. Here is a Kubota is MX5400. Yep, got that right, nailed it. Now, you'll see the front tires, and yeah, we don't have them side by side, but I believe these front tires are a little bit bigger than like uh, the Kubota Grandel tires and even like the John Deere 4M and 4R. I believe these are a little bit bigger. So they redesigned the MX line a, a few years ago, I think it was, and allowed or offered an option with a cab on there too. So again, factory cab, air conditioning and heat. Uh, this one has the armrests in there. So we did a video on one of these a while ago, a couple years ago, Chris and I did, and I did not have armrests, remember right? But I believe that's a, an add-on kit that you can get uh, on here. Nice machine, nice spacious machine. It's, a, I believe, a little bit cheaper than a Grandel. Maybe it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but you can get a good look. Now this is a heavy duty bucket from Kubota. They have three or four different bucket options on there. You can see this big old heavy duty rolled edge up top. Um, it's got some reinforced side plates, got the bolt on cutting edge provision. This, this cutting edge is, a, is an add on though. It just would have the provision like the holes already pre-drilled, but uh, cutting edge on there too. And I believe they called this one like the rollback. See how it's kind of rounded there as well. So anyway, a lot of stuff going on there. Let me hop in here though. I'm you know, about six foot three, about 200 pounds, just to give you an idea of, actually I'll hop in this one and then I'll hop in this one. So you can see how a six foot three, 200 pound guy looks and fits in one of these machines and see, they don't build machines for, for guys that are six foot eight, 300 pounds. So if that's you, you know, you're gonna have to make do. I mean, maybe go with an open station, go with a utility tractor. They're gonna have the most space, but this is, this is what you're looking at which I'm perfectly fine, perfectly comfortable with uh, in here. So let's go sit in that really small one there and then see what that's all about as far as space goes. Oh, wow. Oh, probably need to pump up that seat a little bit, but it's a little cramped. I don't think I can go any further back. Doesn't look like it. I don't see where the uh, seat adjust thing is, but, oh, here it is. Nope, that's as far back as I can go. So, you know, this is when you start to feel like you're a little cramped and there not a ton of space. Okay, so I would, if I was gonna be in here for a long time, I think it would get uncomfortable for a guy my size. Um, and if you're bigger than this, I'd probably rule it out to be perfectly honest with you. I'd go with something bigger that has some more, some more space in it. So, uh, let's walk around the building. I think we got a few more tractors somewhere. Some of them are sold. Some of them are not. Some of them are getting stuff done to them and, and all that kind of thing. But we'll take a look. So I bought one just like this. This is a Coyote DK6010. All right, and actually this has been one of our most popular series of tractors that we've sold the Coyote DK series. You can get it in 42, 47, 53, and 60 horsepower. Nominal, I think, uh, you know, the, that, that corresponds with the model number. The horsepower might vary a couple horsepower one way or the other, but man, these these are beasts. So these are smaller than like a, a Grand L6060 or a Kubota, um, a, a John Deere 4066, but they lift as much or more they weigh as much. Uh, you're getting so much power and a little bit smaller footprint. And, and they cost less too. A lot less. A lot less. You're saving so much money. You can buy like every attachment you need for just for the price of getting the tractor uh, from the John Deere or, or Kubota dealer. So just a, a sweet machine, super comfortable. They've got add-on armrest kits. That's one thing. I don't know why they don't include standard. I don't know. I mean... Some people don't care about armrests and some people said they get in the way. Me, I'm an armrest guy. Maybe, it's, maybe I'm lazy, maybe that's the problem, you know, but I just wanna kinda sit there in comfort. But these tractors are 
super awesome great value out there you can get wheel weights on there we put a ton of wheel weights on a uh, triple stack of wheel weights on mine liquid ballast in there um you can get them with telescoping draft links you can get them with uh the telescoping arms and end links and, and everything else they all come standard with one rear remote so we've we've done the videos and i put i put a hydraulic uh, multiplier on mine i put a third function on mine i put a hydraulic top link on it this one has a third function though i think yeah this one has a factory third function on it Alrighty, so it's got a rear remote and a third function up front already, so it makes that an even better value as far as that goes too. Of course, they all come standard. Look at look at their buckets too. These are this is like a typical bucket that Coyote has. So nice roll back reinforced top edge that's on there. This kind of extruded side plate to make it stronger, pre-drilled. They're nice buckets. Anyway. I've kind of become a a coyote fanboy i like i like all tractors though really i do i just like good value you know i took some time off from selling tractors a couple of years ago and um you know when when the pandemic came and things went crazy i, I took time off that you know i just was like the market's too unstable you know used stuff's going for more than new stuff how am i supposed to know what to pay for a tractor and what i'm really going to sell it for anyway the market restabilized things are basically back to normal so um the thing that didn't stay the same was the fact that John Deere and Kubota's pricing went, it skyrocketed. It's insane how much some of their tractors cost. And so, you know, it finally got to the point where I'd always liked Coyote, but they were really the next one up and they're, they've, they're, they're, they're well enough established. They're over a 70 year old company, um, 450 plus dealers in the U.S. They're a fast growing company. They have U.S. based parts, warehouses and distribution. Um, you know, they're doing, I think it's over 500 million in sales worldwide a year they're a huge company they're they're not going anywhere so uh this is like tractor going to a customer's uh location we just got done with this one is added on a grill guard okay we can add on grill guards for you the 511 grill guard that's really nice we added on a third function for them too uh this is a coyote ck 3510 again here show them the wheels here chris so if you get the r1 ag tires these are kind of like the farm style tire they have a whole different wheel on there, and you can see that it has the holes in there to be able to, to bolt down wheel weights if you want them. Uh, this guy over here, another Coyote NX 5510. Okay, this is a, a shuttle shift. Okay, you can get them in hydro or shuttle shift. Actually, show them that one there, Chris. That's an NS 6010, very similar to this guy here, but that one's a hydro. All right, we kept that one for our, our shop tractor. Uh, this one's a beauty. Uh, a, funny story, uh, electrical contractor in virginia or west virginia somewhere down there owned this tractor it was his since he bought it new and his competition in town like the you know the competing electrical contractor decided hey i want to buy it out made him offer he couldn't refuse and so the guy sold his house he sold his tractor sold everything and he moved down to the caribbean and retired <laughs> so he's selling his tractor so not a thing wrong with it uh, this is another one where they ran from the rear of the tractor utilized one of the rear remotes plumbed it up front and then have some outlets up here to be able to use a grapple uh, if you want to. So, you know, and um, look at that too. I don't think I ever noticed that before. That's a single handle, single pull handle lever for the skid steer quick attach. Um, I haven't seen one of those in a while, but I think that's a good idea actually. So this is our tractor that we're keeping out here. Again, this is a Coyote NS6010. We have forklifts, but depending on the weather, like it's, it's pretty nice right now, but when there's snow and everything else, the forklifts don't do well and snow and so we wanted to have kind of a, an outdoor shop tractor and something that can go in the off-road areas something that can plow the the drive something that can mow up and down our basically abandoned business park because nobody else mows it and tackle it there so that's why we got this and we're going to outfit it with all uh, the different accessories and, and vendors and partners that we work with so that when folks come in here they can kind of see all the stuff on a tractor too brush guards and bucket brackets and hydraulics and hose wrap and you know anything and everything we're going to put on here so kind of make it a, a workhorse slash showpiece i suppose so anyway about 60 horsepower on here we put the r14 tires those are my favorite tires uh, just a they're more expensive tire but um, just a great all-around all-purpose tire they ride really nice they handle all conditions really nice um, I, I like them so we got a few more tractors oh well, we got another tractor over here there's tractors all over the place around here 
So we've got tractors all over the place, mainly because they're in different points of the process, you know? So our kind of our regular staging or storage area is up front, but then when they're inbound, they start back here because we bring them in, put them through an inspection uh, process and then through a detail process. And then they'll go up to the, the storage area. And then when they're sold, most of the time folks want to add things to them. And so we bring them back here and we add on the hydraulics or fill them full of rim guard here. Here's our rim guard that we have right now. We've We've got a bunch of tanks, but we've gone through a ton of it. We got to get refilled. So I didn't want to train our guys to do that and get this all figured out when there's somebody 10 minutes down the road that can handle that for us. Just come out here when we need them, fill up the tires and we're good to go. It's a good partnership. They're a great company to work with and it works out. Uh, so here's another one that just came in, another, another NX, I think it is, yeah, 4510, just like the others. Again, we sell a lot of these. They're, they're just awesome value, man. Way cheaper than the John Deere's and the Kubota's. As much or more capability out of these for less dollars. It just, it's a no-brainer. I think that's why they're so popular too, but uh, awesome machines. Anyway, we've got a few more inside. Let's just go show you those as well. All right, so this is the last kind of section of tractors that we have. Now, this is a combination of, well, I guess inbound and outbound stuff. So that's my CK40. We talked about that earlier, the one that had the backhoe outside. That's the one I'm keeping, so we're adding on a third function. Well, let's see. See how far along he's come or not. I know he just put this tire back on. Yeah, so we got these hoses routed now. So we you, you, you tie it into the transaxle, all right? And then you, you get the hoses put on, you run them up front. Well, actually, look at that. You got the third function on there, Ed? Yep. Well, he says, yep, like, duh. Yes, sir. There it is. Third function on there, so now we're gonna still add the hydraulic multiplier on this one, hydraulic top link on there too. But um, that extra hydraulics are just so handy to have. So this tractor is gonna be an outbound tractor. All right, this one's sold. We just got done adding all the extra hydraulics. We have a grapple coming in for it as well. Uh, this is a, another DK. This is a Coyote DK 4710. All right, we added a third function onto this one for the customer. And then the backside, uh, we also added the uh, hydraulic multiplier and a hydraulic top link, all right? And so this had one rear remote, like how we've shown you a lot of these coyotes have one rear remote, but oftentimes you wanna have more, you know? So we add this on and we actually have a local fab company. There's, this is a, a washer uh, fluid tank, but we actually take the cover off. Well, here, it'll look kind of like, yeah, it'll look like, uh, what it? yeah, it look like this one actually. It'll start out looking like this, but it's just kind of thin steel. So we take these off and then have a local fab shop just weld them up, make, beef them up a bit. And then we mount our multipliers right to them. So all the hydraulic stuff we can do for you. Uh, if you want to do it on your own, you can order it right from Summit Hydraulics and uh, save 5% with code GWT, doing it that way too. Now this DK, we're basically re replacing it. So that DK is sold. This one just came in. This is also a... Uh, yeah, DK 4710 SE. You can see it's going through the detail process right now. So super popular. I don't think this one had a, no, no third function on there, but obviously it's something that we can do. Right in front of you is a John Deere 1025R. Okay, this has a loader and a belly mower and then a nice dump from the seat hopper system on the back. So material collection system. No stranger to the 1025R. I own a couple of them myself, and we've done a ton of videos on this model. Love the drive over mower decks on there. Loaders are super easy to take on and off. This is the size of tractor where you, you'll take the loader on and off a decent amount and the buckets too. But uh, nice low hour machine on there. Kind of has all the bells and whistles. It's the premium series, so it's, it's, just, it's just set up the right way. Um, a lot of comparisons I've done about the BX versus the 1025R. I'm a, a John Deere 1025R guy. So here's an open station. We've talked about the, uh, the cab tractors in the CK series from Coyote. This is the open station. Now this is a 25 horsepower version. The CK2610 is the model number. This is where it gets hard, right? Like I don't know how to classify this and compare this against another, another brand of tractor because it's just kind of its own class. 26 horsepower, but this loader lifts 1,800 pounds. That's more than a John Deere 3R series tractor will lift. It's more than a, than a Kubota standard L series. 
maybe more than a Kubota Grand L series. I'd, I'd have to double check. Uh, like a that L3560, the very first tractor, it may lift as much or more than that, but it's way tinier. So you're just a, a lot of power and a little space. So it's a big tires on here. It's it's stable. It's wider. They're just an awesome machine. Skid steer quick attach bucket. Does this one have a rear remote? This one, this one might not have a rear remote. No, no rear remote on this one. We can add them, but doesn't come standard on this series. That's that's the one I was thinking of. That doesn't come standard on there. So good little workhouse uh, workhorse of a machine. Again, 25 horsepower doesn't have the regen that's on there. That's why all these manufacturers make horsepower offerings that's 26 horsepower or less is just to avoid that emission system they don't generally have a lot of issues but it also drives up the cost of the product as well uh, this last one here is actually sold so this is one that's going to be shipping out any day now uh, it's a well yeah. nx 5010 it's one of those nx tractors that we talked about that we sell a whole bunch of them we added on the third function kit up front added on a grapple i think we added on a hydraulic top link on this one too we did, yep. Does have a rear remote on it, but again, we've told you all about these tractors. They're, they're one of our best sellers for good reason, and, and this is just an example of another one that we've outfitted um, per the customer request, and it's shipping out to its new owner soon. Well, folks, that was a whole lot of tractors. I hope you enjoyed it. You got to get a good feel, a little close-up, of what these different machines are all about, how they look, how they're set up, different features that are on them, and how they're configured and everything else. So don't forget, our prices include shipping to 36 states, okay? If you're way out west, it's gonna cost a little bit extra, but we still ship there, okay? And if you wanna put together a whole package, not just the tractor, but get the hydraulics, get your rim guard, get the extra attachments to go along with it, well, we can help you out with that as well. You can put together the whole package, put it on a trailer, it'll get delivered right to you. Again, go to goodworkstractors.com or dreamtractors.com, whichever you prefer. And if you have a question, if you're trying to figure out what the right tractor is for you, shoot us an email. We'll ask you a few questions to get a better understanding of what your needs are, what your requirements are, your budget, all that kind of stuff, and point you in the right direction. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.